Assalamu alaikum. This is Bahar Abdul Ahad, member of group number 53. And my role number is VP1650052. I am here to present the topic diabetes mellitus type 2. So before going to the main topic, we should know about what is actually the diabetes mellitus. It is a combination of different syndromes which leads to the high levels of the glucose and deficiency of insulin. Glucose and insulin, the two hormones, balances each other. Insulin is secreted by the beta cells of pancreas and when there is the destruction of the beta cells, pancreas fails to respond to ingestion of glucose, which leads to hyperglycemic conditions. The other type of diabetes is due to the lack of sensitivity of the insulin to the body. As diabetes is not a single disease, if it is left untreated, then it can lead to nephropathy, neuropathy, and retinopathy. Usually, there are four different types of diabetes. Type 1, also known as insulin-dependent diabetes, while type 2, known as insulin-independent diabetes, third, pre-diabetes, and fourth one is gestational diabetes. We should be able to understand the difference between type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is due to autoimmune disease as described earlier and type 2 is due to the body when become resistant to the insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the first problem is with the pancreas when it is not producing the enough insulin and the second problem is with the cells that are responding very poorly to the insulin. This type of diabetes is usually known as adult onset diabetes and as we know it is non-insulin dependent diabetes. So therefore, it does not require insulin for its treatment. Rather, it will go for the oral hypoglycemic drugs and the patient of the diabetes type 2 mellitus is usually obese. Symptoms of diabetes type 2 may be strong thirst, which is known as polydipsia, strong feeling of hunger, polyphagia, and excessive urination, polyuria. Other than this, there will, there will be the symptoms of visual impairment, slow healing of wounds, with weakness and fatigue. Patient may suffer frequent skin infections, dry mouth, itching, and numbness. Diabetes is a condition that runs in families. Family members share genes that make them more likely to get diabetes. Being overweight increases the risk of diabetes. Carrying extra weight in belly make the cells more resistant to insulin, so effect of insulin on blood sugar will be insufficient. It is important to know that who are at the risk of diabetes type 2. The people who are obese or having family history of diabetes are more prone to it. Other factors may contribute like having hypertension, high cholesterol, or high triglycerides. Long-term risk of diabetes type 2 includes cardiovascular diseases like stroke, heart attack, or causes the eye diseases like diabetic retinopathy and also affects the kidneys and nervous system, which is known as nephropathy and neuropathy, respectively. As far as the treatment of diabetes is concerned, we can also control it by having balanced diet. The diet must include vegetables, whole grains, and certain other foods, which can control the blood sugar. Regular exercise can also help in managing the diabetes type 2. When we need to treat the diabetes by hypoglycemic drugs, we should know the mechanism of action of those drugs and the type of the drug which we are using depending upon the condition of the diabetic patient. There are many types of the drugs which are given in the chart like begonoids, which act by reducing the amount of the glucose made by the liver. Similarly, megalitinide stimulates our pancreas to release more insulin and glucagon-like peptide changes the way our body is producing insulin. So by knowing their actions, we will suggest the drug that should be given to the diabetic patient according to the requirement. Now let us see the diagnostic criteria of the diabetes type 2. How it will be confirmed that patient is suffering from diabetes type 2. If the fasting plasma glucose level is 126 or higher than 126 mg per deciliter, and if HbA1c levels are 6.5 or higher, then it confirms the diabetes. We can also do a test which is known as oral glucose tolerance test. In this test, we administer glucose to the patient orally and after two hours, we measure the level of the glucose in the blood. If it, if it is found to be 200 mg per deciliter or higher, then it will confirm the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. 
Let us go through the case study of this topic. The patient is Mr. X, which is bank employee. His age is 45 years old, and he came with the complaint of excessive thirst, hunger, and urine. He is also feeling weakness and weight loss since six months and having the family history of diabetes in his father. BMI is 32 kg per meter square, and his test results of HbA1c level is 10.2%, while glucose plasma was found to be 335 gram per deciliter. He also complains of blurry vision for which he consulted an ophthalmologist. The subjectives of this case are the chief complaint, which is blurry vision, fatigue, and weight loss. An onset of the complaint is six months ago. Currently, Mr. X is not taking any medication and he has the family history of diabetes and his father. Objectives are gender, male, age 45 years old, BMI 32 kg per meter square, and the lab reports are showing the plasma glucose level 335 gram per deciliter, HbA1c levels 10.2%. The assessment which we made by this case study is polyphagia, polyuria, polydipsia, retinopathy, obesity, and all these are signaling towards diabetes mellitus type 2. Plan should include the dietary and lifestyle modifications first. Patient should be advised to take healthy meals and avoid junk foods. He should take non starchy vegetables and whole grains. Healthy cooking oil such as olive oil should be used. As exercise is concerned, the patient should go for the aerobic exercises. Weight loss is also suggested because it helps to control the levels of sugar in the blood and also control the high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels. Along with the suggestion of the dietary and lifestyle modifications, we have to go for the oral hypoglycemic drugs. Medication will depend upon the required target. Like in case of Mr. X, he is having high levels of blood plasma and HbA1c levels, and we have him to know that he is suffering from diabetes mellitus type 2. His BMI is indicating that he is obese and he eats a lot of junk foods. So the best suitable medication for lowering the HbA1c levels and the maintenance of the plasma glucose will be of the bibinoids class, which is known as metformin. It works by enhancing the sensitivity of hepatic and peripheral muscles tissues and allow the muscles to take up more glucose. It can lower the HbA1c levels to about 1.5 to 2% and can maintain the concentration of the glucose throughout. Our next choice will be cetagliptin. It is the drug of the class DPP4 inhibitors. It will work by reducing the elevated glucagon postprandial and stimulate the glucose-dependent insulin. It is also well-tolerated and do not have any risk of hypoglycemia. So we can use it in this case as normal therapy. The dose for metformin is 1000 milligrams per oral, 12 hourly, and cetagliptin, 100 milligrams per oral, 12 hourly. This is all about how we can access and make plan for the treatment of any patient suffering from the diabetes mellitus type two. And that's bring me to the end of my presentation. Thank you, Allah Hafiz.